as much as two thirds of Ireland is underlain by limestones that were deposited in warm subtropical seas during the lower Carboniferous period of Earth history uh, around 350 to 320 million years ago. However, so widespread is the blanket of sand and gravel and other materials deposited by melting glaciers at the end of the last ice age 15,000 years ago that we hardly ever see this rock exposed at the surface except where it was quarried for building stone and other materials. And in the 18th and 19th century, there were dozens of quarries all over County Offaly, and it's from these quarries that most of the infrastructure of the older part of County Offaly has come. Now, unfortunately, when these quarries were abandoned, most of them were subsequently filled in. For example, a housing estate now occupies the site of the quarry at Scurra, from which much of the buildings at the centre of Burr was taken. And most of the grand buildings in Tullamore, including a lot of buildings, prestigious buildings further afield, such as parts of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin and the Kildare Street Club, came from a very famous quarry at Ballyduff, just outside the town. And this is one of the last great buildings to be constructed of Ballyduff limestone. This is the old county hospital in Tullamore, which was built in 1937. The limestone from Malloy's quarry at Ballyduff had a very fine, even grain that enabled it to take a high polish, making it marble in the terminology of the trade. In the Dublin exhibition of 1883, it won first prize, and a claim that justified Malloy's claim that it excels all other limestone in Ireland for its closeness, durability, retention of colour. Ballyduff limestone was selected by the O'Connell Testimonial Committee for the pedestal of the famous statue by the sculptor John Henry Foley at the end of O'Connell Street in Dublin, both by reason of the closeness of the grain and its being in an unusual degree impervious to climatic influence. One of the most highly prized ornamental stones in the 19th and early part of the 20th century came from a quarry at Tehran between Shannon Bridge and Clonmacnoise, from this quarry here in fact. Now much of the limestone here is fairly ordinary limestone but some of the beds are very different. This bed here for example is a solid mass of sea lily or crinoid fossils. Now, uh, you can think of crinoids as rather like sea anemones with stalks that lived in colonies anchored to the sea floor, a bit like seaweeds do today. Uh, but the skeletons of the sea lilies consisted of um, columns of rings bound together by living tissue while the sea lily was alive. But when it died, uh, these rings broke up and fell to the bottom and accumulated over time to give us this solid mass of crinoid fossils that we see here today. Now, it doesn't look very much when you see it exposed in the quarry face like this, but when this rock is cut and polished it looks very different indeed. This Clonmacnoise marble was especially sought after for threshold stones and tombstones. Look more attentively next time at the threshold stones in shops, and public buildings in many of the towns of Offaly. For most of the lower Carboniferous period of Earth history, much of the South Midlands was a warm, shallow sea in which the fossil-rich limestones that make up something like half the framework of the Offaly landscape were laid down. But in some parts of the county, particularly the area east of Burr and a broad swathe of country east of Tullamore, we find very different rocks, rocks like these, which consist of alternating layers of dark limestone and shale, very friable, easily broken rock, which is, is essentially just, just hardened mud. Now these rocks, which are known as the kelp, were laid down in much deeper water far from land and they contain very little in the way of fossils.
But something else was also happening in the deeper water of that Carboniferous Ocean. This is Ballybeg Bog and behind me is Crohan Hill, which is geologically completely different from anything that we find anywhere else in the Midlands. Much of the rock here is basalt, and basalt is a volcanic rock. It's frozen lava, in fact, because Crohan Hill is the root of an ancient volcano that rose above the sea floor, above sea level, in the lower Carboniferous Ocean. In fact, much like islands in the Western Pacific are today. Most of the rock that makes up Crohan Hill originated as volcanic ash and ignimbrite which consists of rock fragments that were blasted out of the neck of the volcano before settling down to earth and solidifying. In a few places, fragments that originated much deeper in the earth's crust than usual are found, and these rare rocks are of special interest to geologists.